ahead tonight. We'll meet a man who defies all the odds more than once. His accomplishments will shock you. I can't do this. It's impossible. We've all had those thoughts at one time or another. One man has had them, but defied the odds more than once. WECT's Marissa Hundley is going to introduce us to him tonight and explain what the young man did that's going to leave you speechless. But before we give it over to Marissa, I want to warn you, this story does have some mature language that you may not want your young children to hear. So Marissa, tell us, what's so amazing about this guy? Well, John, we first met Eric Fugin back in 2010. That's when he was in a horrible motorcycle accident, paralyzing him from the waist down. Back then, he told us, you just have to keep going. Well, over the past six years, he's shown us he's lived up to that mantra. He never gave up. If you meet Eric Fugin, one way or the other, you just do it. You quickly learn the word can't is not in his vocabulary. What if you can get through a lot? You just don't know it. But getting through the last six years was no cakewalk. Uh, April 14, 2010, Eric was driving home from his class at Cape Fear Community College when he lost control, crashing his motorcycle into a tree. Doctors didn't think he would survive. The cards were stacked against him, and the statistics don't lie. Eric was a fighter, and so was Jennifer. They told me that he was paralyzed below the waist, and so I knew he was going to be a, a paraplegic. Back then, the two had only been dating four months. But Jennifer was determined to have a future with Eric. I questioned um, whether we could have children at the hospital when yeah. he was in ICU. Yeah, that, that and was definitely on her list. She wanted biological kids with Eric, or... Or we're not going to be together. I'm pretty, yeah. pretty yeah. upfront about that. <laughs> but they soon learned conceiving when paralyzed below the waist is an enormous task. Things function, but without the feeling, you don't have... Um, an ejaculation, so, so to say. For two long years, they researched their options together, trying seemingly everything, including in vitro fertilization, with a price tag of $12,000. Once again, statistics were stacked against them. When I go back to those times, it just reminds me of how, how hard it was, and and maybe this won't happen for us. They were desperate, but then a beacon of light, the Miami Project to Cure Paralysis, invited Eric to participate in a clinical trial. And what they did may be unsettling for those of you watching at home. We did what they are experimenting on and have been doing clinical trials for a long time, which is um, electroejaculation. It's a method borrowed from animal husbandry, or breeding farm animals. They yeah, use electricity to, to shock your prostate. If it sounds like a mad science experiment, that's because it was. It's going to be hard to, to wrap your head around it, because for yeah. us it is normal. We talk like, about for, it like it's science, yeah. like it's it a is, science it project. Science. And the Miami project worked. Eric produced a sample, but Jennifer wasn't ovulating. There was no way I was going to take no for an answer. So Eric bought his own machine. I was the first recorded case ever to do it at home without assistance. Um, so that's never happened before. After two heartbreaking miscarriages, on Christmas Day 2012, Jennifer went into labor. Oh. Finally became everything that we had fought for. Mila May Fugent was born. She was a beautiful baby. <laughs> she still is a beautiful baby. And she wouldn't be an only child for long. Ready? Yeah! Okay, here we go. Two years later, her brother, Wolfgang Tiberius Fugit, came into the world. Perseverance will, will get you through the tunnel. A once impossible dream, now a reality. I think we were just determined to find a way. Finding their way together, now as a family. And this is going to be the home site of uh, our new bill. Everything we achieved and everything that we were hoping for, it was, it was, it finally came true. This is ultimately really what we wanted. It has been kind of a fairy tale, in a weird way. Sometimes they're just a story of perseverance. 
And Derek really wanted to share his story to give other paraplegic men hope and let them know there are other options. And his mother wrote this book called The Paralyzed Without Fear. And you can find more information on this story and this book on our website. Marissa Hunley, WECT News.